Well, my first visit to Sierra Leone was in um, March of 2004. And I remember my very first thing was I woke up that morning and saw um, Freetown. And my first thought was like, I'm not in Kansas anymore because it was so different to anything that I have ever seen or ever possibly experienced. And we went to McKinney and worked at the church in the parsonage in McKinney. But then we took some trips out into the rural areas. And that was when it really hit me that this was a country that had just um, recovered from a 12 year civil war. Um, where unspeakable things happen not only to the people of the country but to everyone who was involved and you go through these villages and there is nothing there are children with rags for clothes if they have clothes at all and the schools are burned the clinics are burned well it was just so indescribable and i kept thinking you know, I'm a nurse and there must be something that I can do to address this. And so I got this idea of delivery of healthcare to rural villages. I thought what was going to be the best way to approach this was to make it a health clinic that was actually a community clinic that was run by the community. We also needed to look at the things that most affect under fives morbidity and mortality. And the biggest causes of morbidity and mortality on under fives is lack of clean water, lack of sanitation, lack of hygiene, poor nutrition, and malaria. If we could just address those things, we could make a huge impact. And all of those things are simple things that the community can do that is easily taught by community health workers that will make the biggest difference in everyday health. 2007, after all the groundwork has been laid, um, I had made a couple of trips in 2006, had talked to, you know, I'd chosen the village, um, talked to um, the Minister of Health and Sanitation, Sierra Leone. We finally got to the point where we got to send our first medical team. The first medical team consisted of um, Pastor Don Esslinger, Dr. Stephanie Putzier, Dr. Diane Wells, Lance Burma, Kay Halverson, Gail Keck, Sharon Weller, Dan Bale, and myself. The very first day we walked in the community center, which is kind of like a concrete open-sided building, and that's where we were gonna run the clinic. And I walked in, and there's maybe like 30 or 40 people there, and I'm like, oh my gosh, nobody's coming, you know? And so I said to Aminata, I said, nobody's here. What are, what are we gonna do? And she's like, don't worry, don't worry, they will come. The next day, the community center was packed. I bet there were two, 300 people. I mean, it was just packed and we worked solid that day. And I think on that trip, we saw around 600 people and each person on that trip was engaged in a specific job. Everyone felt that they were a vital part of working in the clinic, but even more so, each of the people in the villages were working with one of us. And so it right away created a relationship. And that, I thought, was so key because you have to create relationships if it's going to be successful. We got home from that medical team, and then Julie, Lance, and I meet, and then they say, we want to be a part of this. And we would like to um, create a foundation to support the clinic, which was like, oh my gosh, this, is, this was so unbelievable because to have them from the very beginning be so involved and wanting to be such a big part and putting so much of themselves into it was truly an amazing gift. The fact that we were able to set up in the community have a place of permanence, I think really spoke to the people and to let the people know that we care enough, we're going to be here, we're going to be coming back because we have a clinic. And the fact that we have health workers and that we have Aminata who's, who's administrating the clinic, I mean, these are all signs that, that we're here to stay. We're, we want to make an impact on your community. We care enough to be here. One of the neatest things that has happened since we started going to Minoko and working in the clinic was there's a community health worker, her name is Isata Ture, and she works in uh, one of the smaller villages of Sherry. At the end of the clinic, just before we leave, to go back home to the United States, we always meet with the village chiefs and all the headmen and the teachers and everyone who wants to go, and, and the community center was just packed with people. 
and I saw to a short little thing, she gets up and she looks right at me and she says, before you came, I had no voice. I had nothing to give to my people. Since you've come and since I've become the health worker, I have a voice and I have something that I can give to my people. I mean, empowerment, um, knowledge, strength, I mean, all those things were, is, were in those short two sentences. And I remember looking at Erin and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, this is one of the things that we're all about, empowering people to take care of themselves and each other. Totally. That was amazing. Each trip to Sierra Leone is an adventure. I always say don't come with too many plans or ideas because chances are they will not happen. However, if you can step aside and see what is happening, it will be an experience that will change and transform you. My head continues to be full of ideas of what we can do. And I ask myself, will I have the time and energy to do them all? But this I know to be true. None of what has happened in Monoco could have happened without the help, support, and prayers of so many, and that this is definitely a God thing. God is good all of the time, and all of the time, God is good. <laughs>